it changes color. You don't have to select it again. Lisa, whenever you're ready. Does that mean we're on or does that mean no? I wonder if that'll have an impact. And it's going to storm on no, us tomorrow. No, I'm talking about. I mean, it's low pressure. All right. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Blake Matthews. Hello. David Paul, KHU meteorologists. Uh, we're monitoring this uh, developing system in the Gulf moment to moment this evening with you. I know you have questions. Uh, if you want to uh, type them in here on Facebook, uh, we will get to them uh, as we move forward this evening. But it's interesting, uh, we're watching the satellite radar composite and it, we're beginning to see a uh, pretty clear indication that that is going to be where we get our, our low level center forming. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And you know, the other thing I can't help but notice is just how small that is. And when you're dealing with a small, a small developing system, yeah. they tend to gather strength a little bit more quickly. So it's something that we're gonna have to pay attention to over the next couple hours. Even though that's where the center is beginning to develop, look at all the rain and thunder. Uh, New Orleans has had a bad day today, yeah. six, six to eight inches of rain. In one hour, six inches of rain there in the French Quarter, obviously flooding lots of those buildings. Remember, New Orleans is a bowl and it doesn't take much to fill it up. Even these weak developing yes. systems uh, can produce a ton of rain. And before I move forward, I want to go back. North Texas, we see these thunderstorms racing through Dallas. I think this does make it all the way down. I think tomorrow morning, maybe even before sunrise, we get these storms rolling through Houston. That'll be our first round of rain with this storm system. Yeah, it will. And uh, obviously, I mean, this is sort of a pattern that um, as this system gets closer, even if it does head out towards Vermilion Bay, I mean, you can see just the, the field, I mean, stretching yeah. from the Florida Panhandle through southern Georgia into right. Louisiana. So that's going to be moving into our area as well. So even that, you're looking at 250 miles? Yeah. Well, I mean, from more. the Florida Panhandle, I mean, oh, you see yeah. the circulation. So, yeah. I mean, when I lived in Jacksonville, making that drive back to Houston was 937 miles, if that's any indication <laughs> that you've got feeder bands that, you know, are bringing showers across a huge section of the Gulf Coast. So the hurricane hunters have been in and out of this thing this afternoon. So far, they have not located a, a closed center of circulation. Circulation. We've been talking about how important that is because that would give us <clears throat> a spot, uh, a dot on the map, if you will, for the computer models to key off of. But I tell you what, this, this really looks like this is going to be our center. You see the little bit of red and yellow. There's a little bit of convection near the center as well. Uh, and it would not surprise me if we, if we had an actual tropical depression by 10 o'clock tonight, we'll wait and see. Uh, that is not official at the moment, but it looks like that's what's happening out here. Yeah, it does. And the hurricane hunters are actually back in there right now. They did find a pressure of 1,006 millibars. And the reason why pressure is important is because the lower that pressure goes, the stronger the storm is becoming. So when it is headed in a down direction, David, obviously not a good sign. They may have actually closed off this center from the latest information that I'm seeing. Of course, we'll get that update coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. If they did, David, you're right. We may we may very well have a tropical depression and or jump straight to a tropical storm. So Blake mentioned the hurricane hunters. They're out there now. They're flying the storm. It's so important to find not not only where the center is, but also as they're as they're flying the, the system, they're dropping drop sons which uh, float down through the atmosphere, gather atmospheric information. That's at low levels from the hurricane hunter. But at the upper levels of the atmosphere, the, another mission was flown today, the P3 Orion. This is the high altitude recon, which samples the atmosphere at the upper levels around the storm and ahead of the storm. So we know what the atmosphere is like that this thing is moving into, and that can really help the computer models get a better grip on what the future holds for the track. And you can see why we need this data so desperately, because we're spread from I mean, Mississippi to Texas on our possible outcomes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these things are going to waffle back and forth. And they a have little waffled bit, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. But you know what? I mean, that's pretty good indication right there as to where this storm may be going. So the, the center of this spaghetti run is in central Louisiana. And at the moment, that appears to be the most likely outcome track is for central Louisiana. Uh, unfortunately, uh, though, we can't rule out a Texas hit, a southeast Texas hit. 
And the Hurricane Center isn't ruling it out either. They've placed uh, a big chunk of Galveston and the Houston area in the western edge of that forecast cone. Yeah, and you know, rarely do we ever see a cone pan out anyway. If, you know, you, you gave the example, yeah. uh, Hurricane mm -hmm. Rita in 2005 gave everybody the big evacuation scare mm -hmm. or whatnot. Um, if you remember correctly, I'm just going to draw here for a second. Yeah. Uh, the, the cone looked generally something like this. He's talking about Rita in 2005. So this, yeah. That was on Wednesday. This was on <laughs> I Wednesday. I remember that and, day. And, and Houston was square in the middle of that cone, category yeah. five. Rita, if you're new to the area, actually ended up hitting right here on the very edge of the cone. Right. So don't think that just because, oh, we're right on the edge, you know, it's, it's not our storm. Rita is a very good example as to everybody in that cone is under a threat of possible impact. It's, it's a great point that you make. And, and really, statistically, this forecast cone is what it is uh, because about 66% of the time, the storm will fall somewhere inside that cone, 66% of the time. Right. The other 33%, it actually hits outside the cone. So the cone, you know, does not it's not like we're setting up barriers in a bowling alley with bumpers, right. you know, it's not set in stone. This can move left or right. And you know what was interesting is um, about 10, 15 years ago, a study was done on, a, on Gulf of Mexico hurricanes in that about 80% of the time they actually miss to the right of their forecast point. Now, that's good news. If this misses, maybe it misses to the right, but you know, can't emphasize enough that yeah. we technically are still in the cone. Yep. That still makes us under threat of possible impact. That and, and all the model runs up to now have run without all that data from the recon mm -hmm. plane, without an actual center being located. So it looks like a center is forming out there. This should help us get a better forecast and tighten up the track as we head in through the next 12, 24, 36 hours. Yeah. And you know, I want to make a point before we go into this graphic yeah. is um, I was speaking to a good friend of mine at the National Hurricane Center, uh, Jamie Rome, and he was saying, you know, uh, it's, it's really important to understand what the cone means. It is just a probability in that you yeah. can't focus on any one computer model. Anybody can get up here and say, oh, well, this model says that, this computer model says that. They've all got different parameters and s some sample the atmosphere better than others, but other mm -hmm. models sample maybe, uh, you know, uh, different atmospheric conditions better than others. And I think that uh, if, as long as, you know, again, you're in the cone, I think it's important to understand right. that the, the risk is there. Well, we deal in probabilities and, and, uh, and possibilities. We don't deal in certainties. So with that being said, what do you do if you're on the edge of a hurricane forecast cone? You do what we've been doing, uh, continue to prepare, swing by the grocery store, pick up uh, a box of granola bars or two or three so you have some food in your house and you don't have to get out if the storm were to come our way. Have some water. We recommend a gallon per adult person per day. Have it for three or five days so that if we get hit and water is contaminated or the power is out and the pumps aren't working exactly. at, your pump, at your pumping station and nothing's coming out of the faucet, you have something to drink. You don't want to become an emergency because if that were to happen, our emergency responders would be overwhelmed with, with life-threatening emergencies. Exactly, and you know, another thing that people don't think about is a manual can opener. Yeah. You know, I mean, so you may want to have one of those as well. Get the pull tops, oh, spaghetti the pull tops, that's you, right. You can live oh, for a week on pull right. top spaghettios. <laughs> uh, I, I did go to college and I can tell you for a fact, you can live on a week of pull top right. spaghettios. <laughs> Stay close to the forecast. We recommend the best way to do this is download the KHOU 11 app. That way you've got the entire resources of our entire newsroom in the weather department uh, right in your hand. And what we're doing is we're updating that with every new forecast update, doing video updates for you. Um, and you'll have the resources, the entire resources of not just, not just KHOU here in Houston, but we're part of a larger company called Tegna. And we own stations across Texas and Louisiana, and we have their resources at your fingertips as well. And then be ready to take action if yep. we get a shift in the forecast, that's just what we have to do is be ready and prepared. Absolutely, and we, we preach this message starting on June 1st. You know, it seems like such a foreign concept though. You know, what are the chances of actually getting hit by a hurricane? Well, I mean, now we're facing a, a, at least a, a risk. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know, now there's runs on grocery stores already and you know, it's gonna start getting the time crunches here. It's certainly too close for comfort. I do wanna look at the comfort. extended forecast because I do think we're gonna have some thunderstorms tomorrow. Uh, that stuff coming out of Dallas yeah. is, is heading right toward us. The atmosphere is ripe. So I think tomorrow morning, maybe even before sunrise, we get thunderstorms in here. I'm going with 60% tomorrow, but it may end up being higher than that. And then if we get that, that central Louisiana forecast track, that's gonna keep almost all the rain with the system 
in Louisiana. So I've lowered rain chances for the moment Friday, Saturday and Sunday. You see the north wind on the weak side of the system. Right. We'll take that all day long. Yes, we will. What you don't want to see is the forecast for a south wind. <laughs> right. That would mean we were forecast to be on the dirty side and that would be a lot more serious. So at the moment it's be prepared and watch and stay close to the forecast. And uh, we're going to have all the uh, we're going to have a, ne uh, a new forecast cone on the 11, uh, 10 o'clock news. Yep. So uh, KHOU 11 news at 10 on the TV side. That will be like the, the latest update. Uh, I'm just loading in a, a web update and an update on the app. So download the app. You'll get the latest update here this evening, and we'll keep you posted. And, you know, the other thing is the National Hurricane Center, at least today, has been very good about getting us those updates about a half hour early, maybe yeah. 15 minutes early. So, you know, join David Paul's Twitter page and his Facebook page. Join mine, KHOU. Blake 11. Um, we're posting everything there first before we get on social, before we get on TV. We've been active all day, all night. We're pretty much around the clock. We just want to make sure that you have the latest information so that you can make decisions that you need to make for your family and your business. And we'll see you live on the TV side on KHLU 11 News at 10. <laughs>